Well, will you look at that? Wow. Yup. We're doing it. We're actually doing it. In my hand right here, I have one of the most expensive casting reels you can literally ever buy. Unless you buy like a solid gold casting reel, which this basically is, essentially. <laughs> I wanna introduce you guys to this reel right here. I think I featured this reel in a video like a long, long time ago, and it kinda dawned on me that I never fully did a video like fishing with it. So that's what I'm gonna do today. By the way, this is in no way, shape, or form a flex, but the reason why I'm making this video is to show you guys what it's like to fish with a thousand dollar reel and to show you whether or not it's truly worth spending that kind of buck on essentially a tool that cast out line and reels it in. So let's see what this little reel is all about, maybe catch some fish with it, and uh, I'll give you my overall opinion once the video is finished. But uh, first and foremost, just take a freaking look at it. You can't deny it's not pretty. It looks like, uh, I don't know, it looks like something from the future. In other news, the Conquer My Pond contest is still going on, so if you wanna sign up for a chance to fish with me at your home waters and film the whole thing, check the top of the description, click that link, and enter to win. It's gonna be a really awesome contest for those of you guys who didn't catch my last video. Basically, I will go out to your home water, whether it be a creek, river, pond, bring my cameraman, and we will go head to head on a full on challenge. Click that link in the description, sign up, and uh, maybe we'll go head on head and catch some big bass together. Anyway, that's all I wanna share with you guys today. Let's, uh, let's get all rigged up and, oh God, almost dropped it, and fish with this here $1,000 bass fishing reel. Wow. How bougie can you get? It's like this thing, it literally looks like Versace made this reel or like it was like a Gucci Daiwa collab. Like, what is going on? It's crazy. I love it though, it's just so, it's so extra. I'm, I'm a big fan of the looks, that is. You're about to see how it fishes though. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. For now, we're rocking with this. I'm probably gonna throw a wacky worm on the monoblock, the thousand dollar reel. And then I've got my $200 reel rigged and ready to go with a frog. So, Cinco frog. That's, that's kind of the duo we're working with here. By the way, I've never fished this lake before. So, yeah, it should be interesting. I think I just saw something surface. Let's get this thing dialed in. Oh, well, we're already having problems with the reel. So just a disclaimer, I have fished this reel once, but it was never really like fully on video. So um, this is gonna be kind of a first impressions on camera type deal. Oh, cast pretty nice. The controls are a little wonky. Like instead of an actual like numerical braking system, you just have this fat ass dial <laughs> and you just kind of turn it doesn't really say plus or minus, like you have no idea what it's doing, but like you kind of just have to figure it out. I think I figured it out uh, right now. My like like midsection of the spool tension or magnetic brakes is right adjacent with that uh, dot forward facing, that forward facing dot. So that's that's what I did. I just finally got that nailed in. And then also the spool tension is pretty huge. I've got that dialed in pretty loose. I would say just below medium looseness. If that's even a measurement. Medium looseness, yeah, that, that, that makes 100% sense. That's one kind of oddball feature with this reel is there's just no like real way to figure out what the hell you're doing. It's almost like, it's like getting to a nice expensive sports car and then seeing all these buttons and then having literally no labels on these buttons and having to figure them out for yourself. That's pretty much the equivalent of what's going on with this reel. It's just kind of confusing getting it dialed in, but I think she's good. Yeah, yeah she's casting pretty nicely now. Like I just sauced right under that tree. As much as I love casting into this cesspool, I'm uh, I'm pretty much done fishing this spot. It's really grimy. Like I've fished some really dirty stuff, but this is just grime. Not my cup of tea. Okay, on to spot number two. Spot number two. Feeling extra giddy about this spot. I haven't fished here in probably a few months since February when the water was super cold, but now it's warm. I'm seeing some grass around here. It's looking majorly spicy. So I'm gonna bring, of course, the the reel the reel and i'm gonna bring a frog rod yeah let's just stop talking and start casting what do you think i'm feeling good i got my Senko in my pocket i got my trillion thousand dollar reel i'm gonna get me a big old sassy bass let's dibble dabble on over to the pond and see what we're twerking with over there dibble dabble do people say that or is that just a me thing sounds like a, uh, an expression that you'd say if you want to get your ass kicked at a bar Oh my God, this is like a frog fishing heaven right here. Everything about this has got me really excited. Oh, that's, I've already got one. Oh, he just came off, he just came off. There's a construction dude over there and he closed his like tailgate and it scared me. And as soon as it scared me, I got bit. You guys probably saw me jump on GoPro, but that wasn't because of the fish. 
It was because, uh, <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh my goodness. What, my drag slipped. Why did my drag slip? I didn't even jump because of the blow up. I jumped, then the blow up came. Oh my God. Oh, there's a fish right there. There's a freaking fish just chilling right there. Holy moly, today's gonna be a good day. Wow, that hook is ridiculous. Oh, there's one. Come on. That's a good fish. That is not a bad one. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Stay down. Stay down. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Nope. Don't do that. Stop. 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 Stop it. Slow down. Let's do this together. Come on now. Come on now. Let's work this out. Oh, boy. Here he comes. Here he comes. Okay. Yes, sir. First fish of the day on none other than the lamborghini bugatti reel that's a quality one real tall look how like freaking tall she is she's like not very long but it's got a very uh, tall stance you're wide set <laughs> that's sick first official bass of the day looking pretty good i was kind of down in the dumps i went to two ponds fish a little creek and they didn't have a bite but this guy woke me up i'm feeling really good about the rest of this pond funny thing is i've actually fished this pond four times and this is the first bite slash first fish I've ever gotten out of here. So it feels good to get one step closer to conquering this little pond. Nice fish though, like not bad. Not bad at all, guys. Well, I kind of jimmied that up. I was gonna do a nice little uh, slow-mo release of that fish, but she kicked out of my hands before I could get it in, in that slow-mo. Anyway, here's a flower instead. That's pretty dope. Not as dope as, as releasing that bass, but at least it's a consolation. Today's been a funny day. Okay, let's keep throwing the uh, the Senko around. The $1,000 reel is, uh, is doing good. I don't know if it's fully worth it yet, but it's a catch. Here are my comments after catching my first fish of the day on the reel. I think it's pretty powerful. I was a little worried it's gonna be too dainty. I mean, it looks like a mantelpiece. I didn't figure it to be like a full on all around great reel. It's definitely a collector's item, no doubt. But it handled that fish nicely. I've got it locked down drag. The drag didn't slip. I'm using 30 pound braid, which can be kind of wiry and hairy. Um, and it did nice. I, I can't talk bad about that. One thing that's a little awkward is setting the hook and reeling into a fish with these tiny little knobs. These are like little tiny toothpick knobs. I can barely hold onto them. Whereas with this reel, I've got these monster knobs. Plenty of room to grip onto these things. Like I'm not gonna slip, but I could see these just getting really old if it's like raining outside or if it's super wet. I mean, it's just straight little pieces of metal. This would especially be garbage if it was like really cold out and I had to put my hands on this thing because it's just gonna absorb all that coldness. Uh, same with the heat too. Imagine if you just let this sit in the grass for a bit, it would get super hot. Not saying you'd wanna do that with a thousand dollar reel, but you get what I'm saying. I'm just trying to make a point here. <laughs> anyway, that fish came on a little black and blue stick bait, a little prototype stick bait. Oh yeah, very nice. Weightless rigged because we're fishing a ton of grass right now. I just threw it out there a good ways, let it sit for a bit. I think I twitched it like once or twice and then she just hammered it. Good looks, I'm using the uh, favorite seven foot rush. I'll leave the whole setup linked in the description below other than of course the prototype worm, which is yet to come out soon, very soon, but not yet. Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish. That's a fish. Okay. Okay. Yep. Oh, you're in the grass. Get out of the grass. Get out of the grass. Yes. Okay. Scored this dude right under the dock. He was aggressive. I didn't even see any fish there. I was like straight up blindly casting and he wanted it. That's fish number two for the golden reel. Hell yeah. All right, let's see if we can get a sick slow mo release on this guy. Freaking ill. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. Yes, on the frog. Come in, come in here, come in here. Oh, big slop. Big slop, big slop. Oh, flip. Oh, wow, he's really heavy. He's got a ton of moss on him. Oh, yo, okay. Little sloppy bass. <laughs> oh, the Senko is fun, but the frog is even funner. He just hammered that frog. I knew that a frog had to get a bite in the slop. Like, it just didn't make any sense that they were only eating the Senko. Finally, my first good strike on the topwater frog. Super dark because of that grass. It's so cool how these fish adapt to whatever like conditions they're in. Like if you if you catch a fish off a rock, generally speaking, he's gonna be a little more pale, a little grayer, especially if they're in dirty water. But this is clean, clear water with a ton of grass. So this fish is very dark, has like no pale spots on them whatsoever. 
Boom! Okay, I can live with that. So cool. Throwing them back in the slab. Can't believe they live under this stuff. It's so weird, man. I remember when I first picked up a frog as a kid and I started fishing like really thick slop. It just amazed me how how fish like could make their way through that thick grass and, and like find the frog and grab it. If you really boil it down and think about it, it is insane. Like that fish doesn't even see the frog. He's just kind of guessing because he sees a little bit of movement on top of the matted grass. I love that. Catching frogfish out of super thick grass is, in my opinion, unbeatable. It's just so much fun. And there's the aftermath. The two pounder turns into a seven pounder when you catch them out of the snot. Oh, that was cool. That was sweet. Is he still on? Is he still on? I don't know if he's still on. He might have popped off. Nope. Is he off or is he on? He's on. Oh, he's still on. He's just not very big. Oh my god, he's so tiny. <laughs> he's just a rambunctious one. Oh, look at him. He's pissed. He didn't get to fully fight because he was under all that grass. Doinked him. There we go. Okay, chill, 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 chill. Oh, see you later, dude. That was awesome. So much fun. Looks like the storm might have settled down a little bit. Hopefully it just passed us. Frog bites picking up. Starting to get a lot more chomps. One thing I'm seeing a ton of right now is I'm just visually seeing a lot of bass on the very edge like the far edge of these uh these reeds in this grass mat and i think i think a lot of them are like majorly post-spawn meaning they're guarding their fry instead of guarding their eggs on beds i did see a bass back there near that dock and he was like circling around this ball of fry so i think these fish are super aggressive mainly because of that reason and one of the best baits to throw if you're fishing grass where there's where there's bass guarding fry, it's just a frog. You can't really fish much with this thick stuff. You can do some punching, you can throw that Senko, but a frog is just, it's the pinnacle. You can watch him eat it. It gets in and out of slop really easily, um, and it catches very big fish too. It's a perfect post-spawn bait. And I'm thinking most of these fish right now are, are full post Malone, not really on the bed scene, pretty skinny, pretty worn out and looking for a meal. There's another one. Oh my goodness, dude, they're eating it on the edge of the weeds. Wowzer. I'm not even getting them in the mat. Like, they're just out in the abyss. So sick. Another one. See, bud? That's crazy. It's so funny. You got all this lush grass. You think they'd be right in it, but I've gotten a lot of bites on the outskirts and where those little pockets open up. Oh, fuck. God bless it. That was a good bite. Shot it. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good fish. Yes, sir. He's got a big head on him. That's the guy that bit the first time. Wow, I thought he was like a three pounder. He's got a head like a three. Just choked it. That was a sick eat. Like, that was like freaking five yards from my feet. Definitely the biggest one of the day. Sick. Slot bass. Cool. Back down to the abyss. Hey, man. Shout out to you today. Frog gets an A plus in my book. She just really got her done today. I was thinking, man, went to that first pond, pretty crusty, came here, didn't get many bites, until I fully committed to the frog and Senko, and the frog came up on top. I really feel like we got a lot done today. Caught a lot of fish, did some pond hopping, and we even got to test out the Versace reel. A lot of stuff went down today, but huge shout out to the frog for just pulling through and making today's video happen, like wow. I think I probably caught six fish on the frog, all very quality bass between like one and two pounds. One of them might've been close to three, but for an afternoon of fishing right before the storm, not too bad. I'm satisfied. Good looks, frog, good freaking looks. Pond mission is now over. I'm slipping out of here just in the nick of time. It is about to get really, really bad. I think we have a flood advisory for like two days here in Northern Texas, so uh, I'm ending my trip short. I don't wanna be stuck out in the rain with all my camera gear and my fishing gear, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head back to the crib and I'm gonna talk about this $1,000 Versace reel. And I wanna share with you guys some of my opinions and thoughts about it and what I think of it overall as not only a fishing reel, but just as a piece of equipment that is very expensive. I wanna go over the pros and I wanna go over the cons of something like this and maybe as to why some crazy person out there like myself would be inclined to purchase a fishing reel that costs four digits. I mean, that's that's a ton of money. So I'll meet you guys back at the house and we will discuss further. Okay, 
Let's talk $1,000 reels. So the reason why you clicked on this video, is it worth it? $1,000 for a fishing reel. How can you even fathom that? When I was a kid, the first reel that I purchased was I think a $40 reel. And here we are now reviewing reels that cost more than a down payment on a freaking car. Personally, I think this reel is pretty much amazing in looks. I dare you guys to find me a reel that looks better than this one. It just, it's just incredible. For those of you who are curious, this is a mega bass times Daiwa reel. So it's a collaborative project essentially. A lot of the mega bass reels are based based off of Daiwa frames and Daiwa chassis, if, if you will. So it's a Japanese product, and as you guys probably know, most Japanese manufacturers take extreme pride in the quality of the products, and that's why you have a, a, a thing like this. So this reel is going to last you a long time. It's a quality reel. One thing I will say is it does feel like it's built with a lot of rigidity. I don't feel like this is like a weak reel. I don't feel like this is a mantelpiece, although I made that comment today. It really is rigid, like the drag's nice. Everything feels like it was designed with uh, longevity in mind. There's seemingly not a piece of plastic to be found on this reel. You've got carbon fiber on the side, and the whole thing I'm guessing is most likely um, aluminum, some sort of aluminum alloy, but it just feels rock solid. It feels like an F-250. So let's talk about how this reel fishes. Um, I will say it did pretty good today. It caught fish, the drag was nice. It cast like an absolute dream. I can launch a weightless Senko quite a distance with this reel, but um, it begs the question, is it a reel that I could use every single day? And I think the answer to that simply is just no, there's no way. There's things I really like about it, but there's also things I really hate about it. For example, today I mentioned that the knobs, the actual grips in these reels are pathetic. Like, it looks neat, guys. Like, Mega Bass, you did a great job with the looks of this reel. We get it. It's fancy as hell. But this is just so impractical. As you saw on my other reel, I've got these giant meaty knobs. A lot of the Shimano reels, all the dial reels I've used have got, you know, big knobs, and that helps when you're you're winching in fish, like especially frog fishing. And this is tiny. There's not much to hold on to. And if it gets cold out, this is going to be the most miserable thing to hold on to if, you know, you're fishing slow with the tube or a shaky head. I don't like that. That's not cool. The other thing I don't like about it is this reel's kind of confusing. I believe in the side casing you've got magnetic brakes, which is something you don't normally see in a cylindrical casting reel, which I guess is cool, but it's just unnecessarily uh, confusing in a sense that there's no actual measurements around the dial. So you don't really know what you're doing. Eventually you can figure it out. It's not the end of the world, but it's just like one of those things like why? Like why didn't you want to put numbers on there? Like, But even like myself, I've been fishing since I was four years old. I'd like a little bit of you know, context here. And there just isn't any. So that's also kind of lame. Um, the other thing too is this reel is actually really tiny. When I first bought it, I thought it was going to be this big, massive reel and I was going to use it for swim baits and, and big bait applications, but it's not. It's pretty small. This this is very comparable to like one of my smaller 70 size casting reels, uh, which is fine. But again, that kind of goes back to whether or not I can use this reel on an everyday basis. Like, I don't think I can make this my daily fishing reel, but it does excel when casting, you know, like I said, lightweight Senkos. You could use this for drop shots, crankbaits. This would be a magnificent crankbait reel. It works. You saw it. It caught fish. It's not just something you frame and put over your fireplace. Uh, it, it actually is a fishable reel. So for those of you guys who are wondering, it is a collectible, but it also is a pretty rock solid reel. Okay, so now you know it works. You know it looks good. You got a taste for it. But here's the big question. Is this reel worth $1,000? Here's the thing. A lot of my people that watch my videos are gonna like what I have to say. A lot of you guys are not gonna like what I have to say. I think it is worth $1,000 if, keyword if, Right there. Yeah. If you are the type of person that takes great pride in their product and likes collecting very unique one-off items, I think it's worth a thousand dollars. This is the craziest reel. You'll, there'll never be a reel like this ever again, in my opinion. This reel, I think, was manufactured in 2012, um, and since then they have not made another one like this. They have not made another special. They've all been different types of monoblocks designed by Edo and Mega Bass and Dio. Uh, I would say if you're into that, then sure, it's worth a thousand dollars. If you've got the money, if you're that type of person that uh, has a Porsche in their garage and washes it every week. This is the reel for you. Um, but if you're the type of person that's gonna throw a bunch of money into a reel and expect the performance that matches that dollar amount, then no, you're not gonna get this. You're gonna be fairly disappointed. I would say this reel fishes more or less like probably a $300 reel, uh, maybe $400 reel. It doesn't fish like a $1,000 reel. But the reason why it's $1,000 isn't because it's gonna make you cast farther. It's not because you're going to get better hookups with this reel. It's because it is a piece of artwork. Mega Bass is all about pushing the envelope, making really amazing things, and uh, creating designs that truly stand out. So that's why we have this. There's the answer. Whether you hate it or love it, that is my personal opinion. I'm not telling you you guys should buy this reel. I'm not telling you you shouldn't buy this reel. But I figured this would be kind of a cool video because I don't think anyone's ever really done a video like this about a $1,000 bass reel. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's epi. Um, if you want to get this reel, I'll leave it linked in the description below. But that's it. I'm peacing out. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, and I'll catch you guys next time. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.